Okay, so let's look at setting up Max to use the Arbor material. So first of all, we want to go into the render setup and we need to change the scanline render, which is usually the default to Arnold. That's that. Then we need to get something to render. So uh, quite a good thing to test is a teapot. So let's just drag that into the scene. And then we need some light. Uh, and the easiest thing to do is probably an HDRI. Um, I've got some HDRIs from HDRI Haven, which is really good. I'll put a link in the space below. And all you need to do to load that is um, we go into rendering, environment. You can do that by through the menu or you can press eight. And then we're gonna add an environment texture. So find maps, bitmap. Pop, pop open a dialog and I've got some HDRI somewhere, HDRI even, there we go. And I'm just gonna use the 2K, which is plenty for what I need to do. Say so yes to all that lot. And then I'll just drag it over into the compact material editor just so I can edit things, remembering when I do that uh, to set it to instance rather than copy. If I set it to a copy, they won't be connected, so I need to make sure that it's an instance like that, and then I'll get these little uh, grey triangles on the outside, like that. So that's it, it's ready to render, so let's just have a look. Uh, am I in a perspective view? Yeah, why not? Uh, press Shift F to get my safe frame, I'll just zoom in, zoom in a bit. Oh, it's late, I tend to slow when it's late. Right, render production. So there we have a very bright object which is rendering. Uh, that's actually just got a standard scan line shader on it. So let's give it something more Arnoldy. So I'm gonna click on this and in the materials dialog we'll find Arnold and the standard surface shader. And let's just drag that onto our teapot like that. So now we've got um, the render setup. We'll just do a quick test. It's quite hot. I think we need to uh, change the exposure. So I'm going to go back to over here and do the exposure control. I choose a physical camera. Uh, we don't actually have a camera in the scene, so I'm going to just turn this off. And then I think an exposure value of point, uh, sorry, of nine will probably do for this scene. So let's just try that. Yeah, and that's better. So just about see the reflection of the sun here. And there's some reflections on the back of the teapot. If I wanted, I think I could probably um, just change the segments up a bit like that. Get some nicer curves, that's better. Okay, so the teapot's a really great testing device. And now we can start to inspect all these parameters. So what do all these parameters mean? Because there are a lot of them. Fortunately, for basic materials, we really only need to understand five. Base color, specular, roughness, metalness, and IOR. Base color is quite simply a way to control the overall color of a material. In dialectics, it controls the diffuse color, but in metals, it controls the reflection color. So what does that mean? Well, first, let's go back to light rays. When light hits a surface, it bounces to create two important components, scattered light, which we call diffuse, and reflected light, which we call specular. Now, in metals, there's no diffuse light. We only see the reflected light. The diffuse light is zero. And that's the key difference between a metal and the dielectric. Essentially, a dielectric is anything that's not a metal. And this leads to the metal roughness model. Now, the old school spec gloss model has largely been replaced by this metal roughness model, and this gives a artist a much more intuitive control of these reflections with two simple values, metalness and roughness. Metalness, quite simply, is either on or off. Something is either metal or it's not. Anything that isn't a metal is called a dielectric, unless it's a semiconductor, but generally we don't see a lot of naked semiconductors in our CG scenes. 
And then we have roughness. Now in Arnold this is called specular roughness. Base roughness is different. And specular roughness is just a measure of how blurry the reflections are. Bigger values mean more blur. And when you combine the two, you get this. So on the left we have our dielectric. And you can see that it's a kind of gray color. Uh, you can just see that there are some reflections on the edges. Uh, but with the roughness at five, can't see any reflections at all. They're completely obscured. They are there, but they're just very, very blurry. And on the right, uh, you can see we have a metal. It's obviously a metal because we can, all we really can see is reflections. And, uh, and there's some research on this, but our brains are really good at separating reflections from um, the diffuse surface. So in this case, it's metal, so the diffuse component is black. There's no diffuse component at all. And we're just seeing reflections. And again, with a roughness of zero, we have these nice, clean, sharp reflections. And with a roughness of five, it's all beginning to get very blurry. So under the hood, what's going on is that uh, in Arnold, the metalness value changes the shader parameter. So we get these different meanings for the same values according to whether it's a metal or if it's the dielectric. So uh, with metals, the base color, as I said, controls the facing reflection color. And with dielectrics, it controls the overall diffuse scattered light of the surface. And then the specular color uh, in metals controls the glancing reflection color. And it also controls the glancing reflection color in dielectrics. But in this case, reflection colors should be always set to white. Um, Arnold doesn't control this for you, so you're perfectly at liberty to make a colored specular reflection for dielectrics. But they don't exist in reality. Um, in reality, uh, dialectics reflection color is always white due to the nature of the physics. So this is how to set for a dielectric. Uh, you set the base roughness to zero in general, uh, the base weight to one, metalness to zero, and the specular color should always be white, like pure white, one, one, one. And then you control the appearance of the surface by, in general, controlling the base color, the IOR, uh, the specular weight, which should be almost one. Sometimes a bit of dimming uh, for the edge reflections can help, like maybe a value of 0.96 rather than one. But again, use your eyes and look at reference for this. And then we have a specular roughness, which controls reflection blur. Now, IOR relates to something called the Fresnel equation. Clearly, you don't really need to know it, but uh, all you really need to know is that the bigger IOR values increase the amount of reflected light and also increase the lensing effect of the material. So if it's transparent, uh, then you will have a bigger wonky lensing effect. Uh, but as the IOR approaches one, then you'll tend to uh, just see straight through the material. In fact, uh, the IOR value of one is just a vacuum and rays continue in a straight line through a vacuum. That's one of their properties. So in general, um, an IOR of um, 1.5 will probably do. It's a very good starting point. Many tables of IOR values exist online, but uh, take them with a pinch of salt. Uh, usually those tables represent very pure values and actually everything we see in everyday surfaces tends to be impure or an alloy or have corrosion or other gunk on the surface. So use your eyes first and try and judge uh, the strength of reflections on the surface of that material like in real life. Find a sample photograph of the material you want to make, look at your render, look at the photograph and compare the two. So here we have some examples of changing our IOR values. Um, now it's worth noting that in this particular case that I've set the base color to black and that really helps you see um, the reflections around the surface. It is dielectric because the metalness is um, set to zero and the specular color is white. Um, but in general, we should never actually make our materials black. They should always have some color in them. Um, but you can see that IOR of like 0.1, 1.1, and 1.5 are quite different in terms of the amount of reflection that's coming back to us. And then on the right, we have these very high values like two and five. And actually these tend to give these more metal-like reflections and in fact, very high IOR values um, is another way of making a metal material. And that's the kind of the old school where making a metal material just have a, 
a black diffuse colour and a very high IOR value. Okay then, so to set up the Arnold standard surface for a metal, set the base nervousness again to zero, um, base weight to one, metalness one, speculate to weight to one, and in this case, in Arnold, not necessarily in other renderers, but in Arnold, uh, if you set the metalness to one, the IOR has no effect, so it doesn't do anything. So you can mess with it all you like, it will have no effect. So we just control the metal appearance by adjusting base colour, specular colour, and specular roughness. Now in real life there is a slight tint to the edges of metals, uh, so the facing reflections and the edge reflections are different. Uh, it is quite a subtle effect but you can adjust it in Arnold, so the facing reflections are controlled by the base colour and you can just leave the edge reflections white or you can adjust it to the base colour or you can give it a slight tint like this. Um, so I've totally amped it for this example, this is not really realistic. Uh, so, But you can see the difference between uh, the white specular reflections on one side and the red specular colour on the other side, but normally the effect is quite subtle.